There are two things that are making this November awesome. One of them isn't Thanksgiving. Every November is Movember. What Movember is, it's a way to spread awareness of men's health issues, be they mental, physical, whatever. And how they do that, just like in Breast Cancer Awareness Month, everyone wears pink. In Movember, all of the men grow out mustaches. Uh, they don't, uh, in order to support it, you grow out your mustache all throughout the entire month of November. Uh, they don't usually like us to start with beards and mustaches, so technically you're supposed to shave uh, before November and then grow it out. But I haven't shaved this off since 2010, so that's not going to happen. But in my, in order to support it, I'm just not going to shave at all. Usually I'll, you know, trim it up, keep it a little trimmed and uh, as neat as I like it. But uh, this month I'm probably going to end up looking a little more like Hagrid than I usually do. The other thing that I'm really excited for is something I've come to call... Gamageddon. Gamageddon. All of the big release games that I've been waiting for all year come out this month. Not only do they come out this month, they come out on the same two days. On November 11th, I have three games coming out that I'm looking forward to play. The first off is the Halo Master Chief Collection. This isn't anything new. This isn't Halo 5. This is Halos 1 through 4 remade for the Xbox One. Uh, they've given Halo 2 the complete anniversary uh, remaster treatment just like they did for Halo 1. Uh, so it's all new graphics, new settings, th uh, things like that, but it's still the same game. Uh, they've also apparently added terminals, which I haven't played the anniversary of Halo 1, so I don't know what these are. So I'm looking forward to find out what these are. They apparently give more backstory and videos. I'm not really sure, uh, but I'm definitely interested in trying it. But I've been itching to replay Halo since I played Destiny. Destiny was fun, but the biggest thing it did was make me want to play Halo. And I've been putting it off because I've been waiting for the Master Chief Collection. But finally, Tuesday, it's arriving and I get to play this game that I've loved since I was a little kid. This game's going to be amazing. I can't wait to play it. The second game that I'm looking forward to on the 11th is Assassin's Creed Unity. Assassin's Creed Unity is the next installment in Assassin's Creed. So that would make it Assassin's Creed 5 Unity. I don't know. Assassin's Creed has been really weird with their names. Uh, you had Assassin's Creed, then you had Assassin's Creed 2, then Assassin's Creed other stuff, then you had Assassin's Creed 3, then you had Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. Now you just have Assassin's Creed Unity. I don't know. They, they should probably get a little more consistent with their naming. I'm getting off topic. Assassin's Creed Unity takes place during the French Revolution. Uh, that's all I really know about it. Story-wise, uh, I have kind of been just doing my best to stay away from learning too much about the story because I really just want to experience for myself. Uh, what I do know about it, it's in the French Revolution, and there is customization. There's character customization. And not just getting new armors or a new coat like in Black Flag. This seems to be a very in-depth customization style. I don't know if that means you actually get to choose the face of your assassin. I doubt it. But that would be pretty cool. Uh, but you get to you know decide what kind of robes he wears, what kind of armor, what kind of weapons he uses. Uh, I've always been a fan of the bigger characters. So you know in Assassin's Creed 4, whenever I play my Edward Kenway, he's always wearing that brown jacket that makes him just look a little bit bigger and a little bit tougher. And I use the big broad swords and the big guns that look awesome because I just I like the big presence. So I'm kind of hoping I can do that, uh, you know, just make the character a little bit bigger. And also, if I could have a giant sword or machete, kind of like Adewale has in Assassin's Creed Freedom Cry, that would be pretty cool. Uh, aside from that, I'm really curious how this one is going forward. Uh, I was curious about how Black Flag was going to go forward in the present day story because Desmond was dead. Well, they explained that in, you know, Assassin's Creed Black, Black Flag. In the present day stuff, you're, uh, you work for Abstergo Entertainment and you're using the DNA that they collected from Desmond's body. So I'm curious if that's still continuing that way or is there a new uh, subject, Subject 18, Sample 18? I don't know. I'm really curious about that. The third game coming out on the 11th, I'm not so much excited for but interested in. Uh, Assassin's Creed Rogue. This is, I think, what was supposed to be, they had all the rumors about Assassin's Creed Comet coming out. I think that became Assassin's Creed Rogue. And what you're doing is you're playing as a Templar. 
in during the French and Indian War. Now, if you played Assassin's Creed 3, this is around the same time that Haytham made his way to America and started the Templar Order in America. So I'm wondering if this happens a little bit before, or maybe a lot of bit before, at the beginning of the French and Indian War, uh, and we get to see how Haytham became, went from Edward Kenway's son to becoming the Grand Master Templar in America. Uh, that's kind of, it's always kind of been an interesting topic since they showed that in 3, so we'll see kind of what happens with that. Maybe. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't read confirmation saying that that will be what it is, but I'm kind of, I feel like that's kind of where it might go. But I could be totally wrong. Uh, they're also bringing back uh, naval combat, and so, if, and you get to go to New York, but I think it'll be more like New York in uh, Assassin's Creed 3, which that's something I've kind of missed. Uh, in Assassin's Creed 3 and 4, you had huge areas to explore. You had jungles, you had towns, but, but I miss the big cities. Uh, in Assassin's Creed 1 and 2, you had the giant cities that you could climb around, jump around, go all over the place, up and down. Those were awesome. I loved climbing around those. So in 3 and 4, I kind of missed that. So in 5, I'm looking forward to that happening. Well, in Unity, I'm looking forward to being able to climb around Paris again. That'll be cool. Uh, I don't know if that'll be the same in Rogue. Uh, but it's for the Xbox 360 and PS3, so it's for past-gen consoles. Uh, I'm looking forward to playing it. I'm very interested to see what it has to offer to the story. But aside from that, I'm not, uh, I'm not foaming at the mouth for that one. Then, on November 18th, I have two more games coming out that I'm really excited for. The first one being Dragon Age Inquisition, or Dragon Age 3. Again, Dragon Age is one of those franchises that can't really decide how they want to title their uh, their games. So it's kind of confusing, it's inconsistent, I really wish they would just stick to one thing. They have Dragon Age Origins, then they have Dragon Age 2, now they have Dragon Age Inquisition. I, I don't know. Uh, I'll probably just call Dragon Age 3 for the rest of my life. But this one, apparently the Fade is breaking through into the world of Thetis. Uh, demons and other monsters are coming through and you're given the power you're the inquisitor and you're given the power to close the fade tears and that's basically what you're doing you're going around closing the tears but you're also dealing with problems in thetis again i've tried to stay away from too much of the story because i just want to experience it as i play it but again they're bringing back customization which again i love customization uh, they're bringing back the ability to choose your races. So you're going to have not three, but four races to choose from. Human, Dwarf, Elf, and now they're adding Kunari. Uh, Kunari were a big part of two. They completely changed the way they looked, which I think they looked even better in two. Uh, but they're also... But there's going to be a lot more customization to your character. Without, you know, aside from just choosing a race, you get to choose a lot of little details. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I, I really, I'm not sure what race I'm going to play first. Uh, I don't know. I'll, chances are I'll probably make a human, but I could also make a dwarf for Kanari. I have really no interest to play elves. Uh, and we'll just kind of see what happens. I'm wondering if it's going to be just the, the same backstory for everyone, or if there will be, uh, like an Origins where you have your starting story and then you go into the rest of the story. Again, we'll see. Finally, the last game I'm really looking forward to is World of Warcraft Warlords of Draenor. I've been looking forward to this game for a year. Uh, it's finally here. I, I took a break after Pandaria, after I pretty much did everything I wanted to do in Pandaria, and I didn't play for a while. And then they dropped uh, the new patch that has uh, the updated graphics for the characters and also uh, a little bit more new content. So I've been really into that. I've been playing that all the time, loving it. Uh, I have a, like a dozen 90s I've been playing, dozen 90s I've been playing with. So I'm finally excited to get them into Draenor to just get the full game, play with the garrisons, get the new mounts, the new quests, the new dungeons, everything. Uh, I'm really excited about the lore of this one. Uh, I can't wait to see Thrall beating Groma Grom again and his parents and Garrosh meeting Grom and just things like that are I'm really looking forward to. Uh, on a side note, there's another game coming out that I'm kind of... I, I, I'm going to get it. Uh, Grand Theft Auto V is being re-released for the Xbox One and PS4. Honestly, I thought it had already been on the Xbox One when it first came out. Apparently it didn't. 
they're releasing it for the Xbox One and the PS4 now. I'm going to trade in my Grand Theft Auto V 360 copy. I'm going to get the probably PS4, uh, probably the PS4 copy. Uh, they're not really, ch I mean, the graphics are going to be a little bit better. I've seen comparisons. They're not that different, but they are adding a first-person viewing mode. So you can play the game in first person, which I like. Is that that actually sounds really cool? Uh, I've never been a huge fan of first person. Uh, the I can the only two games that are first person that I really like are Halo and Bioshock Infinite. So I'm not a huge first person player, but this way of playing Grand Theft Auto seems interesting. So I'm definitely going to try it out. I'm looking forward to that. But this isn't a game that I have to get when it comes out. Like I can wait a little bit for this one. So that's all for Game Again. Uh, it, it, it's, it's good and bad that it's happening right now because it's good because it's happening right now. I can finally play these games. But it's bad because uh, I have a short story I have to write for class and I have no idea what I'm going to write. I have to get ready for finals. Uh, I'm, you know, getting ready to do some more stuff with the Super Gilly Brothers. I've got a lot going on. So I think I'm just going to remove myself from the world for a little bit and just play these games. And people will see very little of me in the coming days. Sorry. What games are you looking forward to? And what about those games are you excited for? Let me know in the comments. You can get me on Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, and Instagram. Uh, check out my other videos. Subscribe to the channel for more from me. And check back later so we can geek out some more. And until then, have fun. Say hi to Gordon. He's had a rough day. He had to go get his nails clipped. I know your life is tragic, but he got a new toy out of the deal, so I think he's going to be okay. All right. Say bye, Gordon. Mm -hmm.